How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to walk you through how to install an exterior light. Now this could be installing a security light with motion detector like this one, a simple light on the side of your garage, or stepping up to the higher end like I will be doing with a UFI integrated security light and 360 camera in one unit. So we won't really be focusing too much on the actual fixture that we're installing. Instead, I wanna help you avoid the three common mistakes I see in exterior light fixtures to make sure you're both code compliant and you have a safe, long-lasting installation at your home. So the first thing you wanna look out for when installing exterior lights is that you have a nice flat surface to mount to. Here we have a vinyl mounting block that's mounted and it goes right over my double four inch vinyl siding that I have, which is the most common size of vinyl siding that you'll see on any modern home. So why we want that, I'll move that out of the way and you can see a little black gasket there. So these fixtures usually have a gasket that you wanna securely press against a flat surface and then that's gonna help keep moisture, dirt and debris out of your junction box and away from your wire connections, which are not watertight. But if you are installing at a new location, just make sure you get a mounting block for your vinyl siding, your cedar siding or your wood siding so you have that nice flat surface to mount to. And usually these blocks, this one's about seven inches by seven inches, a little shy of seven inches. So that's really a good surface and most light fixture bases are gonna easily fit on that mounting block. So now I'm gonna remove the old light fixture to show you number two in terms of the most common mistake. So I wanna make sure our power is off to the circuit at this stage. So when we take this off the wall, we don't have to worry about any live wires inside. So with my non-contact voltage tester, I will confirm that the hot side has no power so we can start working on this. And the nice thing is this light fixture actually has the issue for number two and that is no junction box. So right now we have our wire connections made and they're really housed within the fixture itself, but that does not meet code because these wires are not actually within a junction box. So let me show you some of the remedies and how to fix this. So let's go ahead and remove the old bracket that's just mounted directly to the vinyl siding. which is not correct. Your bracket should be mounted to a junction box. Then we'll go ahead and remove our old fixture. Here's to see if there's any loose connections. It seems like it's pretty secure. So we'll undo those wire nuts. Now, sometimes we jump into these projects, you get to the stage and it kind of gets past your comfort level. I totally get it. And if you need a higher professional, I don't want to leave you behind. I just did a poll online and said, hey, when you're changing on an exterior fixture, is that a DIY project? No, you call on a professional because you're just not comfortable with electrical, or no, you call on a professional because you just don't have enough time. And over 20% of you guys say, yep, I need to call on a professional. So two things we put together because it's good to have the knowledge independent if you're gonna do this DIY, or you're just trying to build your own knowledge so you can work with a professional more effectively and get the finished product you want. One, you'll see a link below the video, you'll see a cost guide. So I'll put together some direction on cost guides, whether you're just doing a simple swap out of an exterior fixture, how much does that cost to hire a professional, or possibly if you wanna install a new location, a light fixture at a new location, what would that cost? So that'll give you your rough ballpark so you can start budgeting for that project. And then two, there'll be a link to hire a professional. So if this is something you wanna hire out, it'll jump you right over to electricians, type in your zip code and you start looking through electricians, looking through their reviews, looking at the Google reviews, looking at the Better Business Bureau, so you can get the electrician that's right for your job. Now for this job, how are we gonna get a junction box in here? So the option I'm gonna go with is what's called a pancake box, which is 5 8 of an inch thick and it's four inches in diameter. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this vinyl block slightly so I can inset this and secure it to the sheathing on the outside of my home. Hopefully that gets me somewhat close to flush with this outside surface. So when I install that new UFI security light and camera, that the seal makes a good seal with this vinyl mounting block. Now maybe you have a brick surface and you just have Romex coming out. In that case, you might wanna to turn to an exterior box such as this, where you can run that Romex right through the back, secure that in, and then with two mounting hole locations drilled into your brick, you can mount that box and it's secure. Just know you are gonna have a little bit more of an offset when you mount that light fixture onto this box. There's 
different colors that you can get in these so you might be able to match a little bit more to your exterior so it doesn't stand out that much but now i'm going to get this pancake box set and then we'll move on to the third most common issue that i see homeowners run into so i'll just go ahead and trace around the four inch pancake box so i know what material i need to remove i'm going to use an oscillating tool here and just kind of take my time removing that material from the mounting block so i can offset the pancake box be careful of any wires or anything like right here that's running right under the mounting block, making sure you don't damage those wires. Then once you have that, you can take your pancake box, run it through the back, protecting that wire with the plastic insert. And then I'll use two mounting screws, which will sink into the sheathing, and then I'll be able to pull those tight, getting as close to flush as possible. And then number three is do not use wire nuts for your connections. So why is that? Because we're gonna actually be maybe on the ladder up in the air, we're gonna have something like this fairly bulky in our hands. This is for exterior lights, this is especially for vanity lights or ceiling fans. And why I say don't do wire nuts is because you're trying to juggle a lot of things and then you're trying to make a solid connection in terms of lights between a stranded piece of wire and solid. And that's kind of a classic struggle where you might be making a loose connection that equals issues in the future. So what do I do is I take the fixture itself and I connect the Wago lever nuts. So these are 221 Wago lever nuts. And here on my ground, it's gonna be a three wire because we're bonding the actual metal box like we need to. We're taking our ground from our Romex that's providing power those two are already installed. So all I would have to do when I come out here is just take my one strand here, insert that into the lever nut, watch through the transparent housing, making sure it goes all the way in, and then close that lever and then pull, do a pull test to make sure it's secure. So now I already have one of my connections made. I'm ready for hot now. I have the lever already up. Now I connect up my hot tab close that lever, and then I do that same thing for neutral. Literally that fast, I made secure connections all the way around, so there's just no comparison. Wago lever nuts, especially in this type of application, really shine, and I highly recommend them. And then if you need a quick reference on where to get Wago lever nuts, look right below the video, you'll see a link to our Amazon store. Scroll down to the electrical section, and a great way to get started is just getting one of the inexpensive kits that'll have two wire, three wire and five wire Wago lever nuts. So with pancake boxes, you do not have a ton of room, but you do need to try to get those wires all within that box itself so they are contained. And then for this unit, I'll just have one mounting bolt through the center here. And that's it. Now I have a securely mounted light fixture and hopefully those three mistakes going through those are going to help you with your exterior light installs. Whether you're doing a super fancy install like this UFI security light and camera combo or you're just doing some simple garage lights. Now, if you wanna dive deeper and just kinda of do a beginner's course going through a bunch of the basics of DIY electrical, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through all the basics, everything from tools to best practices in wiring to start to build up your knowledge so you can do those small electrical tasks around the house and do those according to code and safely. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.